Hello everyone and welcome back to HTML and CSS lessons on Code Academy. So last time we looked at a bit more on CSS and we found out how we can use span and div if I remember correctly. We also learned a bit more about tables. So today we're going to be concentrating a lot more on CSS and in the following lessons. So let's get started with this lesson. Seeing is believing. Take a look at the oops. I need to reset this code. Um, never mind. So take a look at the HTML file in index.html. So basically this. Um, pretty standard. So we know how to do all of this and it looks pretty simple. Uh, we could do this any day of the week. So that's pretty simple. The stylesheet.css tab. So all of this stuff. Uh, which we will learn how to do later on, contains all of the CSS st styling information, where HTML elements should go, what color they should be, how big they should be, and more. So we've commented out a crucial line in the index.html file. If you remove the comment, so the lesser than, exclamation mark, dash dash, and then the closing one, on line 4 before the text, and that after the text, you'll be able to see the magic CSS imports. So don't delete any of the actual link tag. So let's do that and see what happens. So as you can see, the web page uh, looks a lot better. So if we look at it before all of that has happened, it looks quite bad. You, If you went on a website like this, then you would probably be like, oh, this is dodgy. I should really get off of it. But if somebody does something like this, Oops, I did not mean to just do that. Um, sorry about this. If they delete these two things, then the website looks a lot better. As you can see, this looks like it's being made by somebody a bit more, a lot more experienced actually. So that's what we're going to be learning in today's lesson and the lessons following. So let's move on. What CSS is then? Let's start off with an explanation. So CSS, it means cascading style sheets and is a language to use to describe the appearance and formatting of your HTML. So HTML is the bones, CSS is the skin. Basically think of it like that. Uh, a style sheet is a file that describes how an HTML file should look. That is it. Uh, we say these style sheets are cascading because the sheets can apply formatting when more than one style applies. For instance, if you say all paragraphs sh should have blue font, you but you specifically single out one paragraph to have red font, CSS can do that. And we'll talk about cascading in section 4. So click on stylesheet.css, this tab, uh, near the top of your screen, next to index.html, we've put in the CSS to make the paragraph text look red, but you need to add the CSS that will make the text between the uh, span tags look blue. Fill it in and click save and submit code. So, oops, if you reset the code, you have nothing here. And the blue part is not blue, it's red. To change that, it's simply just copy this over and instead of red, because we want to change it to blue, put blue. And now if we do full screen, as you can see, we have the word blue there, and we can save and submit and move on. Now, why separate form from function then? Great work, look at you, you're already writing CSS. There are two main reasons for separating your form formatting CSS from your functional content or structure HTML. Number one, you can apply the same formatting to several HTML elements without rewriting code. So if rewriting code in programming is probably the worst thing you can do. Ask any programmer, they will say the same thing. So for example, if you wanted style color red, you wouldn't want to write it over and over again. So you can apply similar appearances and formatting to several HTML pages from a single CSS file. So say you had a website with 100 web pages, you really wouldn't want to be pasting one whole thing over and over and over again. You just want that to be used all across all of your web pages. And with one file and a link, you can easily do that. And let's see what we need to do then. So look at the HTML in index.html, which is what we are looking at right now. 
That's a lot of spam tags. All those words are in regular font, but we want them to be super fancy. So you wouldn't want to be adding uh, the cascading styles right in here. You would probably want to, to do it just once. So that's why you go into style sheets and change it in here. So what we need to do then is change the font family to be 44, I believe. Uh, oh no, we need to change the font family to be cursive. You can't change the font family to be 44, what's wrong with me? Font family, colon, and cursive. I thought it was usually done with a capital C there, so we'll keep it like that. And now if we check out the website, you can see that certain words are accented with cursive font. Send a submit code and we can move on. If it's in, it's out. Uh, we previously showed you how to do inline styling with HTML, like so. So that's what we're learning how to avoid now. This is less awesome way to style your website for the reasons we just mentioned. You have to write the same code over and over. And if you want to make a big stylist stylistic change to several elements or across several web pages, you have to change every single style tag, which is very time consuming. With a single CSS file though, you only have to make the change in one place. Very convenient. There are two ways to put CSS in one place. The first is to put your CSS between the style tags right in the same file as your HTML. So basically it's telling you that in between the head tags you can put a style tag there and then put all of your styling in here. Or you can put make another file uh, right in the same file as your... So these style tags go inside the head of your web page. Check out the example in the editor to the right. So like it's done here basically. Save and submit and we can move on. Link it up. So to actually tell the, your code where to get the cascading style sheet from, you have to tell it where to get it from. Otherwise it's not going to know how to do that. Be that's basically what you do when you insert hyperlinks and stuff as well. So, but there is a wet better way than doing it in the head. Making a new file is much better than doing it in the head, usually. You know you should write your CSS in a totally separate file, but how do you make sure your HTML file can see that CSS information? So you do this by putting a link tag, as, your, as you saw in the first exercise of this course, between the head tags of your HTML page. Your link tag needs three attributes. So it needs a type, a rel, and a nature. The type attribute that you should always be, it should always be set to text slash CSS. The rel should always be set to style sheet and the href depends on where your CSS file is in your documents or whatever. So then in the editor to the right, you'll see two files. We have the index.html and stylesheet.css. What we need to do is insert a link to the style sheet in CSS a index.html and we can check out the hint if we need help. Um, let's see if I can remember how to do this. So we need the link and we know that it's a self-closing tag so we can put that straight away there. And we have the attribute uh, type equal to something semicolon then we have rel equal to something else semicolon and also href equal to another thing. In this case href is equal to stylesheet.css because that's the name of our file here. Uh, rel is always going to be equal to stylesheet and type is always going to be equal to text forward slash CSS. So let's see if we have done it correctly. Yes we have. So as you can see the font change size straight away. So let's move on. PSA self-closing tags. So this brings up a quick but noteworthy concept in HTML, the self-closing tag. Because nothing ever goes between link tags, it's okay to use a single set of uh, brackets to the for the opening and closing tags. You do that like so. So you have an opening there and then before you have the closing you have a forward slash. 
That's just to say that it's a self-closing tag. You may have noticed us do something similar with the IMG tag, which is used for images. So most tags are not self-closing, just remember that, but we'll point out the self-closing ones to help save you time and typing. So that is pretty much it. We <laughs> didn't, it was just to remind us that that's a thing. So if you guys have any questions, do feel free to ask in the comments down below. I will be making sure to answer them as soon as possible. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and share. It helps me out and encourages me to make more. But if you didn't like it, do press the dislike button and tell me how I can improve for next time. But until that next time, thank you guys so much for watching.